Hey guys, you're watching me, Supermans. Welcome to my stream. Today I'm gonna be going over overclocking with you guys and how to do it safely, and obviously get the best you can out of your processor. Nice for some of you guys, this will relate because you may have software-based um, overclocking programs on your computer. For other guys, you will obviously have it in BIOS. Now, the BIOS can be entered by pressing. Uh, basically by mashing delete when you're starting up your computer it will load up obviously a, a blue BIOS screen which is a standard EFI screen or it will load up a new UEFI screen which is where you, you can use your mouse and your keyboard but I'm gonna go over certain aspects of how you overclock safely and what to test for and how to trial it out and it should obviously hopefully give you a good outcome on what you need to do you know you can find overclocking clubs if you want to find it whatever people are reaching for your certain processor and chip obviously just type in your chip on Google for instance and then type in the overclocking club it will come up with a club dedicated to your overclocking uh, percentage be that graphics card or be that a central processing unit it's up to you but I'll show you basically the basics here of what you'll need and I'll bring it up on the screen for you guys here Okay, so so this is what we'll be looking at at the minute. This is my system, and it's just uh, near enough as good as the BIOS. This, you know, MSI and Asus have obviously done real good justice lately on their overclocking software on the computer. You can do this in BIOS, so you don't need to worry about these settings that I'll tell you. And as well, if you've got this processor, guys, well, good for you. You can try my settings out. If you haven't, do not try and try my settings out. You need to obviously try and find your optimum range. And I will basically tell you how to do that safely. So this is the, what you want to do, guys. Basically, load up your program or load up your BIOS. And... If you are loading up your BIOS, you cannot watch this video while you load up your BIOS because obviously you need your computer to watch this video. So I would suggest you put me onto a mobile phone device or a tablet device if you've got it. And therefore, you can continue on listening to me and how to do it safely and optimally for your computer. Right, the first thing before we go into overclocking, there is risk that you will degrade your hardware over time. But I will let you know, guys, that a lot of people get scared about that reason. But by the time your processor or some or your graphics card does degrade, it's already past the warranty, and you'll probably already be looking for something stronger because games won't be able to run on it. So, the next thing, guys, I'd like to say is it also voids your warranty unless you get an in. If you've got an Intel, Intel do a tuning plan. I will link that for you guys on the end of this video or well basically check it out in the YouTube link it will be there for you guys and it, the tuning plan costs about $35 for my processor which as you can tell is the i7 6850k and basically the uh, tuning plan cost me $35 it does cover warranty for overclocking and basically what it does is if you burn out your chip or your chip massively degrades because you've done something wrong it will then replace that chip for free of, well basically free of charge it's not technically free of charge because the, the plan costs you $35 but instead of you going out and buying the same chip again for your motherboard it's going to cost you maybe $300, $400 or free £400 depending on where you're from you know, it'll only cost you $35, which is about £27 in the UK at this minute on the markets. <clears throat> so it's not too bad, guys. Make sure you get an Intel tuning plan if you have an Intel. That's just a guarantee, you know, a guarantee on top of your warranty to make sure that if anything goes wrong, if you've done anything wrong, that you've got that risk covered. 
Now let's move on to the next step, cooling guys. You need to make sure that you've got good cooling. Nowadays an all-in-one water cooler, you know, is preferable and it's cheap. You know, you can get a cheap all-in-one water cooler and add on really good fans if you really want to keep the radiator cool for near enough the same price as a real good air cooler. You know, and the good thing is about all ones, you know, yes, they're self-filled and you obviously can't fill it yourself unless obviously you cut the barbs yourself and start doing it. But the um, <clears throat> thing about it is, is that, you know, they, they last a couple of years, you know, you at least get about a year and a half of them if you run them on high RPMs, you know, because that's the pump included, you know, it will run on high RPM, but they will last you a good time. You know, I had um, a while ago an Enermax um, double rad, you know, 120S, and it ran flawlessly for about two and a half years before eventually it broke down. And I was able to salvage for another computer build the actual radiator from it. So you can do that. You can salvage parts from it if it does break down, you know, if you're going to then build your own custom loop. If not, make sure that you've got a good exhaust fan and you've got a good intake fan. If you can't put um, side panel fans on, I would suggest you do so. You know, look out for one of the you know real good fans. They will have anti-vibration in them. Some will have ma magnetic bearings. Other ones will have obviously good retention kits that obviously stop it obviously wobbling when it's obviously um, speeding up. You know, some will be low noise, you know, like you've got the Airflow series by Corsair, which obviously is low RPM and low noise. It's not like the SP fans that they have, which is static pressure. You've also got ones that obviously have dedicated themselves to try and do low noise, which is like the noise blocker series fans. You can I'll link them down if you're interested to look at them. And obviously they're good for your radiator rods as well. Well, your water cooling rods. <coughs> Right, so make sure you've got adequate cooling. You know, if you're going to overclock and you've got an Intel stock cooler or an AMD stock cooler, that's fine, but don't expect you to obviously get like, oh, you know, an, an extra gigahertz off your processor. If you're sitting, say, at 3.7, you probably could get four at a stretch if you've got good thermal paste like Conjulent Grizzly or thermal. Uh, rights um, chill factor free or you've got arctic silver 5 something like that and your fans are cleared out your case has been de-dusted and obviously your cable management is good so airflow doesn't get stuck in a vortex or something you might really get four out of it for a while but you've also got to consider ambient temperature in the room you know have you got good ac on you know is it the summer is, you know if it's the winter you're kind of fine you know, if it's summer, have you got a good fucking airflow coming in? Where's your computer located? Do not locate, put your computer near a radiator in your house or a heat source because obviously that will be sucking it into the computer and will affect your overclocks. So, on to overclocking, guys. How do you do it? Well, a lot of BIOSes, just like this program, you can obviously turn it up if you want from here this is obviously the, the, the megahertz basically the megahertz converts it to the gigahertz so when it says 4300 megahertz that actually just means 4.3 gigahertz so as you can see this processor runs at a standard at 3.6 gigahertz and i think on intel turbo boost for this processor it goes to uh, 3.8 so i have this one overclocked at this moment of time on 4.3 gigahertz this processor it kind of maxes out around 4.5 you know i can get 4.4 but it requires a bit too much voltage for my liking so i have it on 4.3 which basically runs in hardly anything so i'll go in and i'll show you how to do this guys right so you've got your basic settings here and what we'll do is load up the voltage section for you guys, I'll have to extend my screen catcher, so two seconds, and I will do that for you guys, and add up another screen capture for you.
Okay, so you can see that this is the programs I'm using at the minute. Ignore obviously my uh, the games I've been curating and playing at the minute. For um, this one, obviously, my kids like to play. So, right. <laughs> anyway, you've got your voltage section, and a lot of these will be confusing for most. Start on auto. You know these ones that are in blue. Most of these are on auto, apart from ones I've preset, like DDR. I've obviously preset the D my DRAM at the minute for obviously my overclock features. A lot of people I I know when they uh, buy good high performance RAM or even ones that contain an XMP profile for obviously getting the RAM on a higher stage, don't actually enable it in BIOS. You know what you need to do is you need to go into your BIOS. You need to look for a section called Intel XMP. Uh, it could be 1.0 or 2.0, depending on what it is. And you need to click on it and say Enable. Then you need to save and reboot your system, and your memory will then be loading on its overclocked profile settings that that the factory has overclocked and guaranteed and they've tested and that's what the memory is meant to be ran, uh, ran on for optimal performance a lot of you think I'm not in able in that because that's overclocking and overclocking my damage no these ones have been tested to do that so make sure you have turned them settings on the next thing guys that I will show you is that when you're overclocking when for instance mine was at obviously uh, 3.6 so I didn't just instantly go right I'm taking this thing straight up to from 3.6 to 4.2 I, I kind of set my boundaries you go up a stage so it's at 3.7 at the minute and you find your voltage now the default voltage for my chip was 1.2 on in, in my BIOS so basically what you do is you find your CPU core voltage, you have to change it to manual and you bump it up and I would say bump it up by about 50. So if it's on 1.2 you want to do it as 1.2 500. One, that there basically just converts on this program to uh, 1.25. So basically I've bumped it up by 50. So I know that it's obviously going to handle a bit more than obviously it was doing. And then basically what you want to do is test it on Intel um, burn test or things like ADA64 or, you know, there's, uh, you know, basically you want to test it. There's other benchmarks out there that will obviously run like Eugen Valley and you know Freedy Mark things like that and basically you want to test your system you want to obviously have a program up that will obviously protect you and your temperatures um, a good one that you can have guys is called hardware monitor you know it's free um, obviously It's a pretty good program. I'll download it anyway for you guys just to show you what it looks like. Obviously, I have it built into this this MSI program, so I don't really use it that way. But I will show you what it looks like anyway. With the commercial free plan on CBS All Access, you can stream all your favorite CBS shows on demand commercial free. Hey, I'm smiling. Enjoy Bull, the Big Bang. I don't really want that obviously loading up, so sorry about that, guys. Um, this is this is just not working the way I want. Two seconds, guys. But right, anyway, when you load up your load up hardware monitor, right? I have it in this program anyway. It's loaded up. And it will obviously monitor your hardware and it will monitor your temps. The, the program I want to use is actually really good. So I'll load it up for you guys here. And Bill will show you what it looks like. Because I don't like using Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer. It's crap. It gives you bad links. You know, this one's straight to their website. 
you know the other one obviously took me to cnet.com i don't like obviously going to unofficial websites even though cnet.com is pretty good still don't like going to it Seems um, my program isn't loading. It does load, guys, and it will load for you. So the reason why it's not loading is I have an issue at the minute where on my computer, basically, if I'm running XSplit for you guys, um, it doesn't like to open any programs when XSplit is running. I do not know why that is. If anybody does know why that is, please let me know so I can apply that fixed my stream. But as I'm saying, guys, you know, I have a hardware monitor built in. I can obviously check the temperatures. The temperatures on my system are pretty good. Temperatures on my um, CPU are pretty good. Um, where it says RPM 0 for a CPU fan 1, that is actually plugged in. And that is obviously two fans that are on my radio rad. For some reason, they don't have a sensor on it, so they don't come up with the RPM. But they are running on... Uh, they have a switches actually on the fan itself where you can switch it to silent, uh, normal, or like an overclocking profile. So I have them on the overclocking. So they are running about four or five RPM, you know, but they are pretty silent. Um, this one here that you're like, well, that would be really loud, is, is actually the pump for my custom water cooler. It's running at that for its RPM. So as you can see, I can monitor my voltages. I can obviously monitor my temperature, so I know the temperature's fine. You'll benchmark the computer, whatever you're wanting to benchmark it on. There is one like a user's ben userbenchmark.com, it's free as well. You can obviously benchmark your computer, watch your CPU, hardware monitor the program I did tell you to download. It gives you more temperatures, and it gives you obviously the temperatures on a graph for you know like what the average is and you'll notice the graph bumping up and down and it'll give you at the end of your benchmark what the max temperature your processor reached so what you want to do is you want to go onto a site and you want to check the the tj max for your processor what's the optimal and safe temp safest temperature for your processor so for instance i can type in 2500k It'll load up obviously on your Intel site. I don't have this processor as you know, but I'm just loading it up and it will tell you the TDP is 95 watts. That's fine. Keep going down and it will tell you the T case. The T case is the max safe recommended temperature. So for this processor, you can see that it's 72.6 C. Anything higher is too hot and it's not going to op run uh, optimally and it's going to start to throttle. On you guys when it throttles that means it starts to reduce its speed and voltage to try and keep it in that safe uh, zone of 72.6 so basically you want to test it if it passes your benchmark or your stress test or your Intel burn test or your prime 95 which is a fantastic program you, you, can, you guys can use you know bump it up again and then basically when you bump it up again keep going until eventually you can't boot into windows when you can boot into the bios but make sure every time you make a step forward guys that you save a profile in your bios and therefore you can always load the last one that you know that worked and you can continue on with the next step so if you've hit a wall and basically that just means that you cannot boot into windows it's just not going into windows it loads up you know the bios and it just doesn't go or it doesn't load up then you just remove the cmos battery plug it back in and start again you know load your profile <clears throat> once you load your profile you can then continue on with your overclocking and basically to get past that wall you'll need to bump the voltage up again so you can go to the CPU core voltage and bump it up. You can check what the max safe overclocking voltage is. There's many guides and many overclocking clubs out there that will tell you Intel's main data specifications of what the max is for the processor. You know, there is a lot of processors out there that do take a ridiculous amount of, of voltage, but be aware, guys, some of them 
voltages that are listed is for LN2, which is the liquid nitrogen that people use to obviously do extreme benchmarks and overclocking. Keep your goal realistic, you know, say if you've got a 3.7 uh, gigahertz processor, you know, for instance, that i5, I just pulled up to 2500K. Kind of say, right, I want to go to 4. That's what I'm going to aim for is 4. So get yourself to 4, you know, by doing the steps I've said. If you get to 4 and it's passed, you know, that'll give you a nice bump in performance for your computing, multitasking, and obviously your gaming. You know, set your fan curves as well for your fans, guys. You know, you can do that in BIOS, and therefore it's running, you know, at the temperatures you want. So, this is my fan curve. So, I have it set to uh, when it reaches 40C, I want my. Um, when it reaches 40C, basically, I want the fans to run at 38%. When it reaches 45C, I want them to run 63%. You know, when it reaches f near 50C, I want it to run 100%, and that's to keep it cool. And then basically, you can see where the fan is sitting at the minute, and it'll just bump up, up, and up, and up. Fan sitting here at the minute, bumping up to here, back down again, and I'll keep going up and down. Basically, it's a curve that kind of goes like that. So when the temperature starts to spike, the fans will go with the temperature, but the fans will start to knock it back down. So that's what you want to do you want to set it but make sure when you're setting your fan curve you don't just go to straight to 100 percent because over time you'll burn out your fans quickly and quickly but you'll also not know with this cooling performance because um think of it like this something's getting hot you're turning fans up to basically blow on it now it's like your hand you start blowing on it and it'll cool it down so every time your hand gets warm do a wee blow and you'll cool your hand down but if you start to blow constantly on your hand, you'll start to notice that the heat actually stays there. It starts to get in a wee pocket, and it starts to stay there. That's why the fan curve is important, because obviously it will constantly, every time the temperature spikes, it will constantly just give it a wee blow and cool that down, instead of having a constant you know, stream on. You can have the fans constantly 100% if you want which I would not recommend because it might be too loud, on your radiator rod, and therefore the radiator itself will not spike too much. Now, as I'm saying, you can run them 100% on your radiator, and that will obviously keep your radiator cool, which cools down your liquid, obviously for your water cooling, and obviously that will help you over time. So then once obviously you can bump up or just set the curve a bit, obviously higher for the, the, the fans itself to run. Now all you want to do guys is you want to keep bringing it up step by step and testing it you know until you hit a wall and either you hit that wall and you can go back then 50 megahertz and then call it a day and be happy with what you got or you can try and push past that wall and I would recommend then if you're going to push past that wall for advanced um, voltage settings what you want to do is you want to find a club like I've told you and you want to try and take notes of what everybody else is using what everybody else is saying is safe and try and uh, use them voltages to see if you can get past that wall if you can't do not worry about it go back whatever your last step was that you know that worked and stick with that step and just be happy that you've got this performance boost out of your system and that's really how simple it is. You want to make sure that it's being cooled. You want to make sure that when you increase the, the megahertz or the gigahertz, as I've explained earlier, to with the processor, you want to increase the voltage with it over time. Now, you don't need to bump the voltage up straight away because, you know, a processor like mine that runs at 3.6 gigahertz and turbo boosts automatically to 3.8, you know, that means it can handle near enough on that voltage, 3.8. So I don't need to increase the voltage, which means you still got less heat and you still get your performance. So if we can go to 3.8, I'll bump it to 4 gigahertz. And when I bump it to 4 gigahertz, as I've showed you, I'll bump it 50 mega, well, up to 50 volts on my core voltage. And basically that will make sure I'm covering the next step that I've just taken, which is the 4 gigahertz. I'll, I'll run my bench test like Prime 95 
most people say run it for 24 hours i'd say for an average gamer you want to run it for an hour you know to be sure some people run it for 20 minutes like jay's two cents he runs it for 20 minutes for himself but you know i've run it safely for an hour because the thing about Prime 95 is it will push your processor to the extreme. It will not fucking make it die, so you don't need to worry about that. It will just push it to the extreme, and you'll find out what the max temperature was, and if your system was stable. If it wasn't stable, you go back to the last step you were on. If it was stable, but your temperatures are quite high, say, I wouldn't go over 70C. I've tried to keep your processor under 70C, but say you're, it's the Prime 95 is finished, it's, you've clicked finish on it, after an hour and your max temp was say 76 or even 80 C that's fine for a normal gamer and the reason why is because when you play games your processor is not going to be doing what prime 95 was doing because that there's tough work you know running the game as a piece of piss so your temperatures will not go right up to 80 C you know your temperatures probably will sit in probably 65 70 you know and you and as you can tell by that i5 500k you know the max t case on that was 72.6 celsius so as i said baby steps guys take it step by step by step don't just say i'm gonna i've got this fucking processor and it's on 3.2 gigahertz i'm just i'm gonna instantly bang it on to 4 gigahertz and i'm gonna whack the voltage right up onto it to like 1.8 volts you know that's where you'll go wrong and you'll kill the machine you want to take it step by step once you start to notice a wall or that you can't put in the windows or your programs are going funny or it's not passing them stress tests i've said to you go back a step test it again for a bit longer on prime 95 maybe two hours and basically yeah you might not be able to use your computer for two hours because you're doing this test but at the end of the day once you've got that performance boost and you've sorted that your engine basically your central processing unit and what it can give you then you basically got a free upgrade. You know, you've basically upgraded that i5 to 5000K to maybe, a, you know, an i5 3300K, you know, and that was free. You didn't have to go to the shop and buy another fucking processor that gives you a, a, a nice performance boost. You've done it yourself. You know, you've taken time. You've got this. You've worked, you know, worked through your tra trial and error tests. And, you know, you know, that now you've got a bit of pride that you've obviously been able to achieve this level of the of basically determination to obviously increase your performance of your system so you can enhance yourself in games or whatnot or increase your fps you know and multitasking yeah. or your um, video editing streaming gaming whatever you know so that's as simple as it is guys I hope that you've enjoyed the video. I can go over a bit more in depth with you if you want, but please just talk to me in the discussion and I will help you out. You are listening to me, Supermans. Please follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Check out my Steam. And also, guys, I have a Windows 10 um, gaming guide for you guys as well, which I know for sure that you guys would like to check out. As well and I will post it up for you and you guys can obviously check it out if you want it is a fantastic gaming guide that I have written myself for you guys and I will put it down here for you it is in the link on Twitch this is my page the comic center you can find me here in the discussion section you know I have got a curating section which obviously will provide you obviously a list of games and things that I recommend all the way through so it's up to you if you want to join the Windows 10 optimization guide what I'm saying can't be found on Steam this is obviously the start of it and as you can tell there's section after section after section for you guys to have a look at and you can just keep going through there's there's the whole guides packed through you guys as I said, it was loaded on the CSGO section because the time I started it, this guide on the CSGO section, it was basically, <coughs> CSGO was really a big game at the time, so I knew more users would be going to it. So, 
you know, there's a lot of people obviously check this guide out already and they obviously like it as their favorite but remember if you do check out my guide and you do like it make sure you rate it guys because if you rate it it bumps it up on the steam section and therefore other people can find it and it will help them so it's a bit of karma you know i've helped you you help them all right you've been listening to me supermans from the comic center i hope you have a good one guys and have a good time take it easy and enjoy your new performance of your computer Peace.